What's up everybody, Pumpkin here. So I have five more cards to go over today. Um, yeah, not much to say, let's hop right into it. So our first card is five provisions, three strength, profit one, deploy boost self by one for each crime in your hand. So uh, we have a few cards like this in the game already. Uh, we have Vendor Elite in a Ardol deck, right? Based on how many tactics you have, uh, it is four strength. This card is three strength. So this card is a little worse technically, except not really because uh, if you look at the profit one, it means the points are just distributed. Uh, you lose a point on the, the unit when you play it, but you get the profit elsewhere. Um, this is also slightly better, I think, simply because uh, when you do play this card, assuming you have a lot of crime cards in your hand, um, it does it plays around tall removal a little bit more, so the points are distributed. Uh, it, it's not a, a lot different. It's one point different, but I mean, if you're playing an eight versus a nine, you're saving a point, so that's kind of nice, I guess. Um, but like I mentioned in the last video, the, the problem with like a really, really heavy crime deck, I mean, you could play a heavy crime deck with lots of crime cards. You could play this card. You could play uh, one of the cards we're going to get to in a bit. You could play the Immune Piggy from the other day. Uh, you could play Cleaver, New Leader. Um, you could play all these like, I don't know, crime type of uh, synergy type cards. But the, the big problem is once again, um, yeah, you can get away with playing lots of crime, but how do you utilize the points off of crowns um, because most of the crime cards other than like the justice card that I showed yesterday and probably a few others um, most of them are profit and then do something profits typically half or more than half of the ability which means you got to spend those coins so you can't have a hand of like eight crime cards and like two of these cards you're just going to lose the game um, because there's no way to spend the crowns uh, via crime. I mean, there, there are a few crime cards that spend crowns, but for the most part, most of them are just gain. Um, so you, unlike an Ardol deck where you can play Vendel Elite and like six to eight tactics that round, right? You just kill stuff. Um, can't really do that with this. So you're going to be looking more so for like four crime cards in your hand and then four other minions or something, and maybe like two of these or Something along that line uh, in, in that kind of deck, if you are playing that many crime cards, I mean, it's fine. I mean, in that exact scenario, it's getting pretty good value. It's getting like seven to eight value for 10. And that's, that's not bad. Uh, it's not as good as Vendor Elite or like a Vanguard or a Doppler, um, but it pushes the archetype. It makes the deck a little better. Uh, do we want the no unit deck? Well, once again, I don't think it's going to be a heavy no unit deck. I think it's just going to be playing fewer units than average. Um, but you're still going to have to play a decent amount of units. So, yeah, I mean, it's cute for the archetype. Um, outside of that very specific deck with uh, Boar um, and a very heavy crime deck, I don't think this card will see much play just because you're not going to be running like 8 to 10 crime in the average. Well, maybe you will. I don't know. We'll see. Maybe if you are running like 10 plus crime cards in every single syndicate deck, then, yeah, this card's pretty good. Otherwise, meh. I uh, probably won't see much play um, because you're, you're going to be playing a lot of unit cards that have profit on it, not necessarily crime cards. So um, it, it, it'll see some play in a very specific deck. Moving along, we have a crime card. This card is five provisions, profit three, boost an allied unit by three. Um, so this would be an example of a crime card that is half profit, half something else. Um, in this case, it's boost an ally by three, which is kind of mediocre because it requires you to have a unit on the board so it's not really a proactive play um if you just need tons of crime cards maybe you're playing i don't know you're playing the new leader cleaver and you want to play shoop and if you're playing shoop you need all the different crime cards you can get and this is a different crime card um so you play this because it fulfills the whole shoop thing that you want to do so in like a shoop deck yeah you play this card because it's an average good card six for five is not bad um yeah it's an average card uh, I, I think there are better five provision crime cards. Um, I'm pretty sure there's like a, I, I'm pretty sure there's a f same card, except instead of boosting an ally by three, you deal three damage and typically dealing three damage is better. Um, so I, it'll see a very, very small amount of play. Um, but yeah, there, there are some other cards that are just almost always better. Uh, so yeah, it's an okay card. It's good for a shoot deck. Uh, moving right along, we have the best artifact removal card in the game. Uh, yeah, this card is six provisions, five strength, profit one. So immediately on play, uh, you're getting six for six value. That's pretty good. There's only one artifact removal card in the game that on average, when you play it, uh, I, I guess, no, even Ida, Ida's seven for eight. Uh, old friend Dao was seven for eight. Um, so the closest one is like maybe Nithril. 
Mithril is a five for six. Uh, this is a six for six. Um, granted, if you're actually removing an artifact, it's a little bit more expensive than Mithril. But if you're not queuing into an artifact deck, this is a six for six, and that's good. That's just why not. Uh, and then if you do queue into an artifact deck, you have fee three melee destroy an artifact. Except it's not a one-time thing. This isn't a deploy. I mean, it's kind of like a deploy. Well, no, it's not a deploy. You play and then you can do it whenever you want. But in theory, if you queue into a deck with multiple ar artifacts, let's say you queue into AQ and they have Summoning Circle and then the next turn they play Frightener, you play this card, assuming you have six coins, you can double fee and remove both artifacts. Is that good? Yeah, that's good. That's like White Frost, except it has a giant body on it. Um... That's insane. Yeah, you do have to spend three fee, but my guess is uh, I, I think you're willing to spend three to remove an eight or nine provision artifact. It, yeah. Um, against Eldane, this is a nightmare for Eldane. Eldane, um, their traps are six plus, I, I guess, incinerating trap. But if, if you, you can't really play this on an incinerating trap, can you? Because incinerating trap will kill it. So ideally, you're hitting like crushing trap or um, horn. Um, so th those are six to eight provision cards. Um, so when you pay the fee, you're trading up by like three to five points. But more importantly, Eldane needs those traps because he, well, uses his Eldane leader on it. And typically you also use them to pull out Aileron and Oak. So losing an artifact in an Eldane deck isn't just, oh, we lose the artifact value. You lose the Eldane value, you lose the elf synergy value, and you lose the Oak value. You lose a lot of points. So, like, this card against Eldane, Eldane, game over. Like, the only chance Eldane has against this card is they snipe it with an incinerating trap. If they can't snipe it, <laughs> good luck. Um, yeah, this card's really good. Easily best artifact removal card in the game. Auto include. Great card. Moving along, we have another dual Squayatel card with Syndicate. This card has seven provisions, two strength. Uh, deploy boost self by zero uh, increase the boost by one for every special card you play this game uh, so this is like really really old protectors and like closed beta whereas every time they were bronzes every time you played a special uh, the the bronze got boosted so this is similar um, as I mentioned earlier in a very heavy crime deck that's running a ton of ton of crime uh, with the boar and the bronze that I mentioned earlier this card fits in it because you're going to be playing a bunch of crime cards uh, so naturally this card will get value um, now in Squayatel I guess you I mean no unit Squayatel is pretty bad uh, after they uh, <clears throat> nice voice cracks um, after they nerfed the immune dragon immune Squayatel kind of just died uh, it kind of fell off uh, will this resurrect immune not immune Squayatel no unit Squayatel no it's not um, because the idea is like, if you want this to get tons of value, you have to play lots of special, lots of specials. It's okay, but the payoff has to be worth it. And the payoff for this card is not worth it, right? Let's say you get to round three and you've played eight spells. This is like a 10 for seven. Is that good? Yeah. 10 for seven is good. That's a good card. Um, but is it going to win you the game? Probably not. Um, also a lot of no unit Squayatel decks play a lot of artifacts, not necessarily spells so you're probably not even getting 10 spells or specials on average by the end of the game so i, I think on average this card is going to be getting like seven eight nine value um which is okay but if you're gonna skew your entire deck and build an entire deck around this card you would want the payoff to be worth it and if you're getting seven to nine value on this card that payoff's not really worth it. This card's not going to win you the game. It's just like a, a good value card for your deck. The problem is the rest of the deck is pretty bad. So, yeah, I it, it I don't think this will see much play in Squayatel. Uh, it'll see more play in Syndicate because, I mean, there, there's a few more cards that uh, help few unit Syndicate. Uh, you got a lot of crime cards. Um, and you got a lot of, uh, you got the immune pig and the card we revealed or talked about earlier. Um, but even then, I don't think it's going to, I don't, I don't think no unit or a few unit syndicates going to be that good. Um, yeah, this is a pretty, uh, I don't think this card's good. You'll play it in the few unit syndicate deck, but you'll realize that few unit syndicate isn't actually that good. So yeah, it's a interesting card. Um, but I don't think it'll see much play. And our last card for today, 
Uh, this card is eight provisions, four strength, deploy, trigger the profit abilities of adjacent units, fee three, boost an allied unit by two. Now, um, a lot of people get hung up on the second part of this card, which is fee three, boost an ally by two. Um, up until now, all the fees we've seen, they typically break even. So if you spend one, you get one, either a boost or a damage. Uh, if you spend two, you get like boost two or you spawn a two point unit. This is fee three, boost an allied unit by two. Well, that's terrible. You're losing value on your coin. Well, not you, you are losing value, but it's actually better than you think. Not the second ability, but the first ability. I, I think people get hung up on the second ability and just dismiss this as a bad card. Um, trigger the profit abilities of adjacent allies. I think we've seen profit four. So if you play this on one profit four card, this is an eight for eight. Is an eight for eight good? Sure. That's not bad. Why not? Um, and... I think the reason why there's a fee three, because you could completely remove the fee three from this card and it would still be a pretty decent value card. The fee three just adds to it. It makes it a little better. The reason for this is, well, let's say you're at like, I don't know, you're at one coin or something and you play this next to a profit four and a profit, I don't know, two. So you play this, you get profit six immediately. Um, let's say you don't have a lot of fee cards in your hand and you need a way to spend your coins. Well, this isn't the best way to spend your coins, but it is a way to spend your coins. Um, maybe you just need a, a large point swing card, and this is this is a large point swing card, right? This is like a eight to ten value card when you play it, and that's that's pretty good. Um, uh, I I do think this card will see play in very specific profit decks. Um, if you're playing a bunch of cards with profit, I think this card's good. Granted, you do typically need to be hitting three to four profit on this minimum. Uh, if you're hitting below three, it's like a six for eight, and that's not very good. Seven for eight is acceptable, uh, but ideally you're looking for like eight for eight or seven for eight. Uh, and every now and then, I don't know, maybe you hit two profit four cards and this is <laughs> a 12 for eight. How often will that happen? Probably not very often, but every now and then this card will just be really, really good. I think it's a good value card. Uh, I definitely think this card will see play. Is this auto include in every single syndicate deck? No. Um, decks that have a bunch of profit cards won't mind running this card because I think on average it will get good value. So yeah, uh, a bit of a shorter review today. There's only five cards today and some of them were pretty straightforward. I hope you guys enjoyed the review. Let me know what you guys think and I'll see you guys on the next one.